At this level, you will be focusing on the eight lotus petals within the Sri Yantra. There are eight siddhis or powers represented by the eight petals of the inner circle. These are anima, which means smallness, lagima, which means bigness, garima, which means heaviness, mahima, which means creativity, isattva, which means godliness, vasattva, which means subjugation, and prakamya, which means fulfilling the objective. And then there's icha, which is willfulness. How can you activate and engage each of these eight powers? Well, let's explore each one one at a time. We have smallness. What I want you to do is tap into the power of your smallness and allow yourself to be vulnerable, getting to the source of what you really want. Do you feel lonely but don't want to admit it? Do you feel overwhelmed with financial stress and you don't want others to know the truth of the situation? Do you hide behind humor or do you say, I'm okay with that? Do you have that kind of attitude? Maybe all you really want is just to be healthier. Let yourself be vulnerable to what you really want and truly want to become. Let your small self be heard and be honest and be vulnerable within yourself and others. Allow yourself to experience those feelings. And if you truly listen to your small self, it knows exactly what it wants. It's this inner being with it within you that's just like, please let me out, let me out. You've been suppressing me for so long. Cutting off that link will only leave you feeling small and powerless. This superpower reminds me of a somewhat humorous yet oh so accurate quote from the Dalai Lama. He says, if you think you are too small to make a difference, Try sleeping with a mosquito and think about that the next time you feel like squashing your small self. Here's a really interesting part about these petals is that they also have an alternative meaning. Now, these alternative meanings, I mean smallness, is basically picturing yourself become extremely, extremely small. It's a little bit of imagination. Picture that you had the power to actually become minute, become as small as an atom. Now, there are ancient scriptures that actually talk about this, about how you can change your physical structure to become as small as you want. And if you can let your mind picture that, and you can feel that you've just become the size of an atom and you're floating around in this universe anywhere you want, and if you can actually feel it, if you can picture it and you can feel it within yourself, and you can create it with the energy within yourself, that we talked about from level two, then what you're doing is you're actually creating that reality. Recently in quantum physics and quantum mechanics, it's also been proven that when we live our lives, and let's just say you wake up and you brush your teeth, there's another version of you that actually wakes up and doesn't brush their teeth. So there's an infinite number of possibilities of you actually happening at the same time. I know this is a little bit advanced, and I know it may sound, sound a little bit out there, but it's true. Quantum mechanics and quantum physics actually prove that there's multiple realities going on at the same time. Then we have the power of your bigness, and this lays in the bigness of your heart for yourself and for others. So step up and take responsibility for, you know, truly carving out the life that you want and that you truly desire. And honoring yourself, honoring your imagination, and honoring your dreams. Bigness is also about allowing others to do the same and be themselves as well. This means allowing other people to truly be themselves without judgment on them, no matter what you think of their ego, insecurities, or their vanity. Bigness, now on the imagination side of things, is imagine expanding yourself to become big. First, just Imagine yourself as if you're the size of a building and you're walking around. Think about how big that is and that energy and that, that feeling that you have of being that big, right? And now picture yourself getting even bigger, the size of the universe. You know all and you feel all and you contain all of the universe. Think about what it feels like to be that big. And I know this requires imagination, but I need you again on this pedal is I need you to think it and I need you to feel it and I need you to create it with what we learn in level two. Imagine being able to feel that. Now, 
this is going to take some practice. This isn't something you can just do overnight. You know, I'm not even saying I'm, I'm perfect at this stuff, right? But as I would start getting better and better at this imagination thing, and as I start picturing these things, you'll start realizing the correlation between that and your real life. And those observances that you have, your, that heightened awareness that you have, is what allows you to ultimately create your reality. Then we have heaviness, right? Heaviness is being definite. It's being firm and solid in what you believe in. Focus again on what it is that you truly want. Do you have it in your mind? In level two, I had you focus on the specifics of what you wanted to accomplish, why you wanted to accomplish it, and how you were going to accomplish it. Now, draw on the power of your heaviness and stay definite and firm on your path to actually getting what you desire. I know getting what you desire can sometimes feel daunting, and you may sometimes feel tempted to just give up. Look, accessing the power of heaviness will help you stay calm, strong, and solid in your foundation. Imagine yourself as if you were heavy. Think of something that you truly want in your mind and put a heavy anchor on it and feel Feel that you're just so heavy. Make yourself heavy so that nothing can knock you down. I want you to imagine that. I want you to be as small or as big as you want, but then you're as heavy as you want so nothing can move you. Think of exactly what you want and make yourself heavy and think about all these forces of nature and everything affecting you. It doesn't matter. It could be people. It could be anything. And I want you to feel heavy in that set. And that's exactly what the third pedal is right here. We talked a lot about creativity in the last level, right? Creating things within yourself and using that energy that's at your second chakra level. Your, your sexual area is your creativity center. If at any point you feel that your creativity is blocked, you know, you can go back to the exercises in the last level and completely free your mind of that. So here, accessing your creativity, Sydney or your creativity superpower will help you expand and magnify that direct free flow of your ideas and your actions. As you meditate on this pedal, allow the creativity to flow through you without judging, censoring, or intervening in any way. So what I want you to do is literally pick a picture what you want in your life. Picture what you really, really are looking to achieve. We just went through the other three pedals, and now we're on pedal number four, right? And in pedal number four, it's creativity. Allow your mind to just expand to the wildest, wildest limits that you can possibly think of. What is it that you truly desire and truly want? Allow your mind to just, boom, flip. Think about anything that you want, anything that you can imagine that will help bring that to you. It could be a unicorn, it could be, you know, a sloth, it could be anything, it could be aliens, it could be whatever it is. Let your creativity fly, it could be geometric patterns, it could be figures, anything. Let your imagination go, picture colors, picture things, picture events, but picture what you are looking to desire and be creative with it. How are you going to obtain it? Go. And then we have godliness. As you focus and meditate on the godliness pedal, feel the lightness that washes over you. You see, this isn't about religion. This Siddhi actually helps you to move lightly and in harmony with the world around you. It allows you to be in flow. It allows you to tap into your, your courage at, at a way deeper level. So it gives you that strength and that courage to move forward and then live confidently, right? And so with that, gives you the ability to have, you know, a subtle touch and a quiet attention, right? It allows you to have that focus on something. And that's way more of a powerful effect instead of having like a heavy hand. So just think about this for a moment. Is it easier to paddle using every ounce of your strength against the current of a river? Or is it easier to paddle even with the light hand on the paddle that's going downstream? So taking this into your own life, when do things generally go your way? When you use force or when you work in conjunction with whatever you want? My guess is if you're being honest with yourself, 
It's that you've seen that the greatest growth and success and potential for yourself and when you're in harmony the most is when you're going downstream, right? And you're working with the elements and the people and the world around you. You're not fighting the system, you're working with it. And so what I want you to do in this exercise as part of the imaginary part of it is to picture yourself as a highly enlightened being with all the courage in the world. I want you to feel strong and I want you to feel very confident in who you are and what you're going to do. Whatever it is that you desire, think about how confident you are to desire it, like to get it, right? Think about how you're going to stand up with your chest out and just be like, yes, this is mine, I'm going to get it. And I want you to feel that power of just knowing and wisdom. The next pedal is subjugation. The actual definition of subjugation is to bring under control or to conquer. You can use this power to conquer anything that is holding you back or blocking you from your actions or forward movement. These blocks could stem from all kinds of things, from your own thoughts and your ideas, um, or they could be like, you know, a result of your perceptions of what people expect of you. The important part here is to follow your instincts and be true to yourself. Only then will you be free to obtain what you crave at your core and ultimately reinvent your reality. If you want to conquer it and you want to bring it under control, think about that for a second. And what does that mean for a second? Think about if you had the power to put something under control, to conquer that piece of it. And it could be anything. Whatever you wish to conquer, let your imagination fly here for a second and conquer it. And I want your mind to be completely, completely wild. You know, I don't suggest being violent, obviously. I want you to think of a peaceful way that you can just come in and conquer it. And if there is something violent that's coming up in your head, such as conquering a city or something, that shows the magnitude of how big you want to think. But don't let the violence get to you. Just believe it. You have to feel that conquering. Feel the emotion of that conquering of that, of what you just accomplished, and what you truly desire. Once you've decided what it is that you truly desire, you can use the powers of the next pedal called fulfilling the objective to bring it into sharp focus and make it happen. Think of this pedal's power as your own virtual like strike team, right? That helps you strategically move towards what you want in a direct, fast, and effective way. When you're fulfilling the objective, you're basically going out there and you're looking at this item and you're like, boom, done. It's fulfilled, it's done. That fulfilling of that objective, right? It's kind of like that strike team. So in the imaginary world of this, you know, as we're talking about fulfilling the objective, think about what it is that you desire. And I want you to feel as though you're, you're doing that. You, th you thought about and you're going through the direct, fast, and effective way of getting to what you achieve. You're fulfilling the objective. I want you to feel what it feels like, boom, the minute that you fulfill that objective and, and you feel that like, wow, it happened. Feel that right there. As if it already happened and you fulfilled that objective. And here we are at the next pedal, and I know you've heard this before. Where there's a will, there's a way, right? So the power of willfulness really is as simple as that. The sheer power of tapping into the strength of will helps you to move quickly and with absolute focus. And it really gets you to where you want to be. Your willfulness, the strength of your will, everything that we live in, everything that we perceive around us our whole entire life, everything that we do, all the actions that we take is based off of will, right? Everything that we do is will. What are you willing to do? And it's based on your will that ultimately creates your reality, right? So I want you to picture right now that where there's a will, there's a way. And in this last exercise, this last pedal, basically I want you to think about what you desire and think about as if you already had it. And think if you had all the will in the world, in the universe, to actually complete that task. To be willing to do anything anything and I'm talking about anything right there's a famous quote that says find something you would die for and live for it and that will that strength of pure will right there is powerful right find something you would die for and live for it 
So I want you to literally go to the extreme with your will here, that you're willing to do anything to achieve what you want to achieve, to get that outcome. The reality of changing your life or getting what you want is that you can't just get something for nothing. You can't just sit about complacently and expect something to change. When you really desire or want something, you have to agitate it or you have to activate something else to make it happen. Again, that's where the eight petals of the Sri Yantra come in. Take 15 to 20 minutes to go back to your project book and really dig deep. How can you tap into these eight powers of smallness, of bigness, heaviness, creativity, godliness, subjugation, fulfilling the objective, and willfulness to agitate or make what you really want happen? How are you going to agitate your current reality and pierce a new identity for what you're trying to create? And write this down. This level is also representative of the third chakra. You can use the power of the third chakra to tap into your physical and mental self. And this is where you honor your integrity and this is where your power originates from. This chakra can help you regain self-control and become the master of your desires. When this chakra is balanced and in harmony, your knowledge turns to wisdom and clarity of thought. This third chakra is also a place where your intuition comes from. It's that gut feeling you get on certain things that you do and you're about to do and certain things that you feel. You know that feeling is very, very real and it should be paid attention to all the time. It's like your natural compass. It's like just like how eagles have their eyes and their ears and they can sense those things. Other animals can sense other things. It's that gut instinct. It's that always knowing the truth about what you want to create. It's about always being in tune with that. So tune into that and listen to that gut feeling. It's actually very strong and very powerful. And I know it's going to be hard to do in the beginning and, and follow that gut feeling. Everyone's just like, oh, I don't know, it's like maybe I should do this. And you get swayed and you get convinced and, and sometimes you do it for other people. But I want you to really sit inside that decision that you make with your gut and just say, no, I'm doing this and I know why I'm doing this. And, and you're not giving up what you want to do for someone else. And just, just think about what that gut instinct is for you on some of the decisions that you make. It's very important that we tap into that in the third chakra.